nitrate freaks to my brand new channel. Who am I? I, I don't think that really matters right now. Uh, we can we can get to that eventually. Mainly, I just want to talk movies with you people. And uh, mainly, I want to talk about silent films. Silent films are kind of a dying obsession with a lot of film goers. I have a lot of film friends, and uh, to be honest, I don't really have very many that are truly into silent films like I am. There's a whole art to them. There's a, just a whole, a whole world to explore and discover, and me being a fanatic of history, it does sort of make sense that I would be into the history of film, and you have to start with silence. So, uh, today, we're going to talk about, on the very first film review of the Nitrate Freaks channel, um, we're going to talk about Variété by E.A. DuPont. Now, this is a movie I had known about for a long time. Uh, it was unavailable for a long time, but Kino recently put out a Blu-ray that uh, I watched last night, and it is fabulous. It's fantastic. It looks probably as good as it looked when it was shown in 1925. Now, um, this is a movie by a director named E.A. DuPont. He is mostly famous for this film, although I would say the uh, anime Wong vehicle Piccadilly from 1929 uh, is equally as famous. And Flicker Alley, who I love, um, they recently put out his earlier film called The Ancient Law, which I have not seen yet. But uh, Variety is uh, somewhat looked upon as being part of the German Expressionist movement. Um, I guess I can see that in the fact that it, you know, stars Emil Jannings. It was made in Berlin in the mid-20s, and it's got some pretty fantastic camera work. But it has very, very, very little to do with uh, the doctor, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari or, um, you know, Warning Shadows or Nosferatu. This film actually has a lot more in common with The Last Laugh, which was made by F.W. Murnau in 1924, which also starred Emil Yannings, um, and was also photographed by Carl Freund, who photographed Variety, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, both films are far more uh, based in reality, but they do really focus on the inner turmoil being expressed um, via the mise scene that you see on the screen. So, um, this was uh, all produced by Ufa and Eric Palmer, who, uh, you know, produced probably all the major German silent films that people know and love, like Metropolis and Nosferatu, and the list goes on and on and on, and he eventually became, he would go to England and do stuff, um, I know he made Jamaica Inn with Alfred Hitchcock and Charles Lawton, among other things. Um, so the film stars Emil Yannings. Um, he plays an acrobat who um, fell and broke his legs early in the film, although it's not shown, it's, it's alluded to, uh, and has now just become kind of a carnival barker. Um, and then one day he meets um, Leah Deputy. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Leah Deputy. Um, who I had never seen before. She kind of plays this uh, waif who is found um, by a ship named the Berta Marie, and they don't know her name, so they actually just call her Berta Marie. And so Emil Yannings and his wife um, take her in. The wife doesn't really want to because she can kind of already tell Emil Yannings has the hots for her because she's kind of a free-spirited woman. Um, so, part of uh, Emil Yanning's carnival barking is that he has a show of uh, dancing women at this carnival, and um, he adds uh, Berta Marie to his show, and immediately feels utter jealousy when she's oogled by all of the patrons. 
And this eventually leads to him falling in love with her and leaving his wife and his baby child, which are never seen again. He just leaves them behind. Um, and this is, you know, this is the star of your film. Uh, it's one of the things I love about these German silent films and these, these Weimar period films is it's, it, it, there's no, like, you know, whitewashed, sugar-coated Jimmy Stewart, Gary Cooper. It's a, these are all real people who do real human things, like fall in love with uh, young, vivacious people and leave their frumpy wives with their baby child. So eventually, they um, meet Artinelli, who is a uh, famous acrobat, played by Warwick Ward, who is stiffer than all hell in this movie. <laughs> He's one of the things that I don't like. Um, he is... He kind of looks like Alfred Abel from uh, Metropolis, but he just... It, he's an English actor, and he sort of acts like all of those English actors you see in stiff British silent films. He's just stiff. Um, but he's also kind of playing a weenie in this, uh, uh, kind of an unscrupulous, um, all, all bluster type character. So I guess it works, but I'm sure it could have been played better by someone like Conrad Veidt, who, you know, would have brought more menace and less melodrama. But eventually, um... The uh, Artinelli asks um, Boss Huller, who is Emilie Annings, and Berthe Marie to become this trio of acrobats, and they become quite famous um, in Berlin. Um, so um, Artinelli falls in love with Berthe Marie, and they have sex, and uh, um, it kind of becomes gossip among the town, and uh, that's where uh, Emilie Annings discovers it. He discovers it by a graffiti. Someone um, graffitis it on a table and, and like a bar and they draw him with devil horns. So he destroys the table and that leads him on a murderous rampage in which he well, it's not really a rampage but it is very uh, um, melodramatic and it's, you know, probably ten full minutes of close-ups of Amelia Annick's face just brooding and uh, he's wonderful at that. Just, just He has such a, a very striking face. Um, and he's not wearing any prosthetics or makeup or anything like he has been kind of known to do. Uh, he, it's just him and uh, he really just, he, he goes from heartbreak to anger to um, murder. And he eventually murders Artinelli. He stabs him. Um, and uh, kind of brings us around to the uh, framing story, which is, it, I forgot to mention, <laughs> the film starts in a prison, uh, and you're talking to the, um, you're talking to a prisoner, number 23, who uh, you don't see at the beginning, you just see the back of his head, but of course you know it's Emilie Annings. When we cut back to Emilie Annings after he uh, confronts his wife with his murderous deeds and washes the blood off of his hands, um, uh, well, I guess it's not his wife, it's Berta Marie, and they're not really married. At least I don't think they do get married. If they did, I missed that. Um, when we cut back to the prison, it's Amelia Annings talking to a priest who gives him absolution, and that's the end of the movie. So... Not exactly the most original story. It is very, very 1920s melodrama. But that's not the reason why you want to watch this film. You want to watch this film mainly for two reasons. The first reason is for Carl Freund. He was one of the greatest cinematographers ever. Um, he photographed things such as The Last Laugh and Metropolis and many other great films. He also shot Dracula and um, directed The Mummy. So um, he was one of the many uh, German filmmakers to move to uh, the United States in the 30s and go to Hollywood and make big budget movies. And his stamp is all over the early Universal Monster movies. Uh, I'd say the look 
of the first three or four um, Universal Monster movies are, are 100 percent based on what Carl Freund was doing in the late 20s in Germany. And the big, the big thing was he, he freed the camera. You know, you watch early movies from the 20s and from the teens and before the camera stays still, like it is now in this video, because there's nobody behind it. Um, well, at least there's nobody behind it for me. But um, you know, in the t in the early days of film, they hadn't really liberated the camera from a solid position. Um, in the Last Laugh, which is one of the great movies of all time, the move the f uh, camera just glides. There's one brilliant scene where it comes down from an elevator, and the elevator doors open, and it just glides across this hotel lobby up to the sliding, or not the sliding glass doors, but the revolving doors, and that's when you are uh, revealed a Mel Yanning's character at the beginning of the film as the uh, doorman. But we will get to the last laugh in another review. In this film, you know, it's a film about acrobats, and the camera takes you up to the trapeze. I mean, you know, We've got all kinds of flying acrobatic footage, which is obviously not the actors. One of the things that this new HD remaster shows you is that when there's any acrobatic scenes, it doesn't even look remotely close. I mean, Emilio Annings is a fat man. And then when you see him as an acrobat up there, it's this thin, built guy. It's a, they really didn't even try. Um, but, uh, you know, the camera moves on the trapeze, you know, you get this crowd point of view where a woman will like pull up these uh, mag magnifying glasses and the camera cuts to her view through the magnifying glass. Um, it's really neat. Uh, you get a lot of um, ca character perspective shots. Uh, there's one great shot in the hallway where they're drunk and um, they're just falling in and out of frame. Uh, but the camera isn't staying still. The camera's kind of woozy too, uh, as if the camera is just another character in the movie. Um, so, really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, and then, the other reason you want to watch this movie is because of Emil Jannings. He was the, one of the great German actors. Uh, he also immigrated to America right almost after this movie. He made just a couple more in Germany. Um, among them, Faust with Murnau, which is amazing. Um, he would be a victim of the coming of sound uh, because of his thick German accent. Um, although he would make the great Blue Angel with Josef von Sternberg and Marlena Dietrich, which was her big star-making vehicle. He did that in 1930, and that was probably his last major film. Uh, there's a few that are lost. I have a lobby card downstairs for one called Betrayal, which is a Lewis Milestone movie that also had Gary Cooper in it, which I would have loved to have seen, but it is sadly lost. So, um, yeah, go out. Find the Kino Blu-ray and give it a shot. One of the great bonus features on it is it also includes the 1922 German version of Othello, which also stars Emil Jannings and uh, Lied to Putin. <laughs> anyway, click the follow button so you can follow this channel and um, you can be hip to whenever new reviews drop. And uh, we will just explore the world of silent film and hopefully spread awareness for this great, great art that more people need to know about. Anyway, I'm the Nitrate Freak, and I'll see you next time.